not doing nothing this summer. You're going to do something. What am I going to do? You're going to do an internship. Awesome. All right, cool. So, um, with that being said, let's talk about uh, chapter two here in our um, in our book. And this is uh, this is talking about um, forming relationships through verbal and nonverbal communication. So. When you think about um, kind of building on the idea of culture, a culture is um, a set of unwritten, unseen norms uh, that a group of people share. Um, some people say that culture is defined in several ways. It's defined in Laws, rules, or norms. Um, and let me let me put this on the board. So, so essential to culture are, and these are um, these are synonyms. However, you want to laws, rules, norms. They're defined by shared laws. Shared language, vocabulary, um, usually shared space. Um, I was going to say land, but we're going to say shared space. And this could be a digital space. And these days, a lot of the big tech companies, um, with with the with the, because of COVID, um, there is a large group of people who are telecommuting these days, right? That they migrate from their phone to their laptop every day, um, and that's that's their that's their commute. Um, and so, these this environment, you know, in each. Each of uh, so our team, for example, we have some shared space. We have the speech house over there, but then we also have the Canvas channel, right? And those two, the, both of those are shared land, shared space, in which we kind of um, work within parameters that is is developed there. So this culture model. Um, helps us kind of think about what does it mean to be a part, okay? What does it mean to be a part of something like that? And this being a part is defined by, uh, especially by the language that we share. So if you are a computer programmer, for example, then you're your language is going to be a lot about computer programming, right? Um, you're going to talk about um, sprints, where you set some goals and you accomplish some things. You're going to talk about commits. You're going to talk about uploading and downloading um, code. You're going to talk about um, bugs, and you're going to talk about testing the bugs and correcting the bugs and, and everything that you can think about, right? That's very technical vocabulary that only someone else who is in that culture would understand, right? Because bugs means something completely different for a farmer, right? It's a completely different culture, right? And their mice um, are hairy and run around, right? And, and things like that. So um, that's just an example of how a culture uses some Words that may sound familiar, but they may use them in different ways. So, um, let's talk about nonverbal communication. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Nonverbal communication. 
So, um, within a culture, there's a certain amount of identity that is that is very important. That, I guess that would be the first thing. And these all kind of lead to one thing, and that's identity. But there are some there are some other ways of expressing this identity. I'll, I'll come back to belonging here in a minute. But um, there, obviously, the shared vocabulary, the shared rules. But you may have some nonverbal ways of sharing identity. If you're a member of a lodge, for example, y'all may have a shared handshake, right? A secret handshake. Um, if you're a, a member of a fraternity or a sorority, y'all may have a um, a shared hand sign that represents your fraternity or your sorority, right? So there are um, verbal or nonverbal ways in which you identify together. And cultures also do the same thing. Um, for example, if you are a member of the U.S. military, part of your nonverbal um, belonging or identity is the uniform you wear, right? You dress a certain way, you have to have your pants pleated a certain way, you have to have your shoes shined a certain way, you wear your hat a certain at a certain angle, all these things, and they ex inspect and they enforce the way that these nonverbals are carried out. There are certain um, groups like uh, like monks or certain religions that have nonverbal uniforms, right? They have like a black collar um, that represents their office. Um, and people who belong to that, um, there are certain groups that can wear, for example, a cross around the neck. There are certain Christian um, groups that they share these, these kinds of nonverbal sim symbolism. Um, if you're a business person, you may um, be in the habit of wearing a power tie and a three-piece suit, or a, or a lawyer or something like that. If you're a doctor, you wear a white lab coat. These are the kinds of nonverbals that, um, on the one hand, say that you belong, and on the other hand, identify you as belonging to that group. Um, also, there, besides hand gestures and clothing, there's facial. Um, and, and we're going to talk about this a lot more whenever it comes to um, interviewing, for example. But how you come across and how you um, open yourself up or close yourself off um, through nonverbals. I come into a room and sit down, cross my legs, lean back. Um, what what do you think we're going to talk about? I talk about football, baseball, right? Um, but whenever I stand up at the podium and start clicking through slides, y'all are kind of expecting me to present content. And like like three of you said, do I need to take notes on this? Right? That nonverbal cues you to, hey, this is a different set of language norms than you know sitting on the couch with your with your legs propped up right so the nonverbals are are important in understanding how this this work culture in which you are applying sits I, I know that we're I'm talking rather theoretically but it might be helpful for you if you can um, start making a short list of companies that you would like to be a part of. A short list. Um, and um, then throughout this class, as we talk about their culture, you can apply 
the point, the, the abstract things we're, we're thinking of to this particular group, all right? So if I was applying to a different company, what is, what is my shortlist? One of them would be Amazon, applying to work at Amazon, all right? Another one would be, um, before, before this job, it would be, you know, applying to be a professor at a university, university professor. And of course, I could, I could even tailor that um, slightly differently um, depending on what university, right? A Christian university versus a secular university. You know, teaching here versus teaching at USM or state, you know, or teaching at Tulane University in New Orleans. Um, what if I was teach? Uh, what if I was working in um, as the safety trainer at a construction company? Um, let's say um, Gray Construction. Gray Construction. Uh, safety manager. These are concrete examples. Um, that I can use um, that will help us kind of like zoom in on what we mean by the culture. All right, so let's take this example of culture to Amazon. All right. The cool thing about a lot of companies these days is they want you to understand their culture. Okay? They want you to be aware of what they're doing. So let's let's go with them down the rabbit hole, okay? Let's go with them down the rabbit hole for a second. Um Oh, I did it wrong. All right, Amazon.jobs. You're looking for, what do we want to do? We're going to do student inter internship. There's 323 full-time uh, intern positions available. You can start out as an HR generalist. You're just working in the human resources department in, at, in Seattle. Um, or maybe you want to be a software student. Let's, let's do software. All right. I, I'm, not, I'm not so worried about applying right this minute. All right. I want to I wanna back up before we even think about that. Huh? Yeah, well, I mean, you could you could limit it to the to the places. Yeah, they have they have hubs everywhere. They have hubs in Nashville and in, in Austin and Dallas, Memphis, uh, uh, Alexandria, Virginia. Um, yeah, and all over the world, England, Spain, South America, Israel, like you said there. All right, but even before then. They want you to know some things. Um, you, they even have 12 positions working from home as an intern. Operations and logistics intern. Uh, Audible software development engineer internship. Business intelligence. Applied science. Global marketing manager. That would uh, somebody in with uh, communications experience could get into something like that, right? Marketing strategy. Um, culture. There you are. That's what I was looking. At. Working at Amazon. They want you to know what their culture is up front. They actually have a page just on their culture. 
What's it like working at Amazon? They don't have a, a set uniform, but most everybody that you that I've met that works at Amazon wears khakis and polos. Right? So it's a it's a non-standard standard uniform, if you know what I mean. Um, they have they want they have specific things that they want to do. It's they call themselves Earth's most custom centric company. I mean, they pride themselves the customer's number one. Um, everything about them is that hire and develop the best. Leaders raise the performance bar with every hire and every promotion. They recognize exceptional talent and willingly move them throughout the organization. Whereas um, Amazon, I'm sorry, whereas Google and Microsoft usually hire um, heavily schooled people. Amazon hires a lot of people who don't have schooling but um, have experience and have hard work ethic. So they look at your work ethic rather than your schooling experience. Um, their leadership principles. Our passion for pioneering will drive us to explore narrow passages and unavoidably many will turn out to be blind alleys, but with a bit of good fortune, there will also be a few open up into broad avenues. If you want to know what Amazon's culture is, listen to Bezos' speeches. Listen to his interviews. What does he talk about? What is, he import, what, is, what is important to him? And so you can click through here and see all of their, they have a bias for action. Rather than spending all our time in, in meetings planning, 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 um, he's like, you know, we'd rather have very short meetings and actually go do something, right? They have a bias for action. Speed matters. Think big. Thinking small is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Leaders create and communicate a bold direction that inspires results. Insist on highest standards. Leaders have relentlessly high standards. Many people may think these st standards are unreasonably high. Leaders are continually raising the bar and drive their teams to deliver high quality products. Hiring develop the best um, so they promote from within as much as possible. Learn and be curious. Leaders are never done learning. They're always seeking to improve themselves. Um, at, at right, they, and leaders are right a lot of the time. Um, leaders depend on their gut and um, you know they have strong judgments. They have good instincts and you know, if they're wrong, they correct it quickly and they get right, right? And they're right a lot of the time. They invent and simplify. They take ownership of their team, even though they don't have to run the company in order to take ownership. You can be a, a, a peer, you can be a, a lowly engineer and still take ownership in the company. And they are obsessed with custom, uh, satisfying the customer. The deliver results. They have backbone that they disagree um, respectfully and they commit to, um, to the team. And they dive deep, they, they examine, they study, they understand, they research, they wanna understand it deeper, they wanna look at it um, harder than anyone else, they use metrics, they use data, they examine, they dive deep. They earn the trust of their customers so that the customer will come back over and over again. Frugality, they accomplish more with less. And then it comes back to the same one. So they just you can just keep see go cycling through these. These are their leadership principles. So companies want you to know some companies, not all companies. My wife just got hired on at um, Forest General Hospital. And they have a very um, robust training program. She was in training for almost two weeks before she was actually on the floor. But they want to get you up to speed. They want to introduce you to the culture. They want you to know the language, right? Um, to work in healthcare, they have language, right? They have special technical things that when the nurse, you know, when the doctor, just take surgery for example, when the doctor is there and asks for an instrument, the nurse can put it in his hand without, without fumbling around and wondering what it is, right? They have 
They have to have um, rules and norms on how they're going to take care of people and how they're going to keep that standard up. Um, obviously, the space within is, uh, is the hospital, right? Um, but you can see how these companies build these uh, build these um, cultures. And um, they, they try to figure out the best way to accomplish what they're, what they're trying to do. When a doctor, uh, going, coming back to nonverbal, when a doctor comes in, what's he going to do? He's going he's to move quickly. He's going to look at the chart. He's going to look at you in the eye. He's going to tell you, this is what I think is wrong. This is what you need. Um, and that strong, firm, um, standing, busy, business, uh, you know, business personality, that nonverbal gives you confidence. This guy actually knows what he's talking about, uh, and I can listen to him. Versus, you know, he slouches in and hangs out on the bed, you know, and flips through the channels before he starts talking to you. Um, you're going to be like, <laughs> and I'm paying him $500 a, an hour for this? Um, you know, so um, nonverbals do matter. All right, so um, sorry, I don't want to go back over here. So our key, our our, our key um, expressions for um for nonverbal communication. I'm going to upload this um, afterwards. I am lost. I am completely lost on here. The key approaches to um, excellence is to come in with a curious mind understand what the culture is, adopt the culture, right? And so as you are thinking about the company that you're wanting to apply to, you're going to want to dive deep. You're going to want to understand what the culture is, adopt ways of speaking, right? Whenever you write your resume, you're going to want to use the language that they understand and appreciate. Right, you're going to want to use keywords in there that will trigger them saying, hey, this guy actually um, knows what, what's up, right? And, and they um, are able to, um, it shows that you have done your research, shows that you are wanting to be part of the team, that you um, value them as a company, and therefore they should also value you and uh, give you a chance in that context. So it's learning, it's practice, it's um, research, and excellence. Um, do y'all have any questions? Um, I mean, the sky's the limit, obviously. Um, but what are you looking for? Uh, oh, um. You know, eight to ten weeks, eight, ten, twelve weeks, yeah, definitely. You put you in the spot, by the way. I mean, I, I love to work with people that are confident. Like, I don't want it to be like a, the office situation, so the TV show, where they, you know, the interns just kind of sit there and get water for somebody. So, I mean, I want to you want to do meaningful work. Right, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, like, I'm just thinking of you just off, just off the top of my head. Um, you want to go into a company. You've got communication skills. You have a, a knack of creativity, right? Um, you're pretty good with social media. So you might want to apply to a company that will let you 
do a small social media project, a campaign that will promote their business, you know, through social media. Say, you know, I'm a communications major, I can do this, 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 and um, I'm good at this, this is some of the stuff I've done, um, you know, uh, so there's that kind of uh, internship, you know. Um, there, I would love for y'all to look for a job that actually pays. <laughs> I know a lot of people have to start with unpaid internships, and you wouldn't want to travel if you're going to get unpaid because you don't want to go in the hole, you know, trying to pay for housing and upkeep if you're going to, you know, travel. So you want to look for paid internships. Um, yeah, definitely. What are you thinking about, Ashley? What would be like something that you think would be? Um, so you worked at as a, you worked for as a student worker at the theater department. Um, would you want to do something like that, or would you want to do something in a completely different field? What what kind of field are you interested in? Say uh, internship in, in a, yeah, a nonprofit organization, a ministry. I know you want to go into um, um, motivational speaking, and so you know, working in a in a ministry where they'll where you can help them, you know, um, kind of uh, promote the company, promote the promote the ministry. Speak up for for those that can't speak up for themselves. I think they say. Um, what's your name, sir? I'm Adam. Adam. All right, I'm Josh. That's a nice name. <laughs> I know you did. You're Um, so what are you thinking about? Uh, honestly, um, I may go in to say that uh, my dad works for a company, and I'd like to go work sales. That's what he did there for a while. And uh -huh. I think uh, communication skills would help me a lot. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Sales and what what um what kind of sales and presentation? Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so do they sell? Do they have like a niche market? Or are they selling to um? Auto mechanics? They're just selling it. I guess big manufacturing companies that need the, the big systems to operate the oh, consumer yeah. lines, I guess. Oh, okay. Like, oh, very nice. Very cool. Um, I worked, uh, I lived in Houston for a while and I worked in the, in the, um, in the oil and gas um, factories there. And we had, yeah, we had the air, like at every level, every spot. You can plug in a, a hose almost anywhere. Right. That's that's what we supply. Yeah. That's that's cool. All right. Um that's all I have uh for today. Uh like I said, next week in uh, chapter three and four we're gonna be actually applying for jobs so maybe um if you have a a job listing or several job listings um you can print those off bring them with you and um we'll start talking about you know actually putting putting work on paper if you need to do. you have anything else for me what time do we have a show on Saturday? Um, I don't know. Let me look at the email. Uh, yes.
Let me look at the uh, 